so much. I am used to speaking on Sunday mornings, slightly different venue. And I have to admit that uh, I'm not a convention person. I'm more of a, of a writer, I guess. And I do have to confess that my last Libertarian Party convention was 20 years ago. That was 1996 in Washington, D.C. I wasn't a delegate. I was more of a party crasher. But while I was there, I met some really great people, including the phenomenal libertarian author and thinker Harry Brown. I met the heroic Irwin Schiff. I met the remarkable Walter Williams. It was a great experience. In those days, my wife Grace and I lived in Philadelphia. It's something like the fourth largest uh, metropolitan area in the country. But back then, the libertarians of Philadelphia met in a little back room at a Denny's on City Line Avenue. And to tell you the truth, there were more weapons there than libertarians. Um, and that's, that's because pretty much everybody carried a pistol, but several of the guys carried two. So we were outnumbered by guns. And it was the absolute safest place to be in all of Philadelphia. It was great. We were a really small but committed group. And back in those days, a lot of people really didn't know what libertarianism was, what the word meant. Or if they did, they laughed at you. And we counted it a win just to get candidates on the ballot. And if you managed to get 2% in an election, we celebrated it like it was a victory of landslide proportions. But let's fast forward to today. Libertarianism is a force to be reckoned with. Think about how our friends on the left dropped the term civil libertarians. Think about how our friends on the right embraced the term libertarian leaning. Oh yes, people still mock us, but not quite as many. But there's been a lot of water under the bridge in the last 20 years. We've seen a vast increase in government. In 2001, we had 9-11, and as a result, we, we saw the creation of the TSA, the expansion of the NSA, and the subsequent revelations of Edward Snowden. We saw the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. And then in 2008, we saw the horrific financial crisis. And in 2010, we had Obamacare. And then since that time, We've seen an increasing rule by executive fiat by the president. We're hearing talk of negative interest rates by the Fed. And, and right now, in this election season, there's a near complete breakdown in trust in the corrupt machinery of the Democrat and Republican parties. In short, we've seen a, a gross failure of statism, of socialism, of the warfare welfare state and imperial interventionism. We've also seen some good things as well that have been helpful to the liberty movement. We had two remarkable campaigns by Ron Paul. We have an ongoing intellectual campaign on the internet and in the media, especially blogs and podcasts and the like. We have LewRockwell.com. We have the Tom Woods Show. We have Andrew Napolitano appearing on Fox News. We have organizations like the Acton Institute and the Tenth Amendment Center and others. But we're still not seeing this translate into libertarians winning many elections. Clearly, we need to focus more on outreach. And I know that some of the breakout sessions deal with this topic, and there's some really good people working on that. As for me, I think we need to see ourselves as missionaries. The word missionary is based on a Latin word meaning to send, because missionaries are sent out to do a job. And a related concept is the word evangelism, which is based on a Greek word meaning proclamation of good news. I think we libertarians can learn from the example of the early Christian church. Think about how the church began. It began with Jesus calling his early disciples, including 12 leaders. One of those leaders betrayed him and then committed suicide. And then Jesus was executed as an enemy of the state. 
And we Christians believe that Jesus rose from the dead. But his 11 remaining leaders found themselves frightened and huddled together in a little room, probably not much bigger than that Denny's on City Line Avenue. They had no idea what to do next. And yet from this inauspicious beginning, within decades the Christian church had spread all across the empire, even though it was persecuted by the government. Within less than 300 years, with no mass communication, the emperor himself became a Christian. And all of this was achieved without weapons, without violence, without force. The church was a voluntary organization, and its instrument of expansion was word of mouth, that is to say persuasion. So we libertarians also have good news to proclaim and mission work to do. We have our own version of evangelism. We are also nonviolent. We are also a voluntary organization. And our instrument of expansion is also persuasion. And the good news that we have to offer is that liberty is part of our human DNA. And that we can order society to be freer and more humane and more peaceful. But all too often, I think we try to win debates instead of, as Jesus said, winning your brother over. For ultimately, we don't want to win arguments. Rather, we want to win hearts and minds. That is our missionary endeavor. Now, another saying of Jesus is, be innocent as doves and wise as serpents. I think this is good advice for us libertarians as well. In our context, to be innocent as doves means we have to have integrity to our message of liberty and non-aggression. No compromise, no deceit, no equivocation. As far as being wise as serpents, I think we need to be good at outreach to disparate groups in order to persuade them to join us. It means being strategic and smart. And so we as individuals can be missionaries of liberty in our own stations in life. Part of the beauty of libertarianism is found in its simplicity and its universality. It is not a religion or a lifestyle. So therefore all religions, as well as people who have no uh, religion as well, and all lifestyles can be libertarian. Libertarianism is merely the assertion that it is wrong to initiate or threaten force or violence against peaceful people. And the political philosophy that grows out from this. It's nothing more, it's nothing less. It's a simple axiomatic principle that allows diverse people to coexist peacefully. We can all have different opinions and yet cooperate and collaborate. I like the example of my own teacher and mentor in the Liberty Movement. I have to give a shout out to my dear friend, Walter Block, and he is a Jewish atheist, and yet he and I are the best of friends, and we mutually respect one another. And Walter sums up libertarianism simply this way, keep your mitts to yourself. As for me, in my own station in life, I often find myself being a missionary of libertarianism to Christians. My own church body, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, is the fourth most Republican church body in the country. Uh, we're actually more Republican than the Southern Baptist Convention. I was a seminary student when 9-11 happened, and if, if you were around in the liberty movement at that time, you know this was a difficult time to be a libertarian. But some remarkable things have happened since then. Today, a large number of my colleagues in the Lutheran ministry and lay people in our church body are libertarians. For they have taken to heart the psalmist's injunction that we put not our trust in princes. So I do teach that Christianity and libertarianism are indeed compatible. I think there are a lot of reasons for this. Christianity emphasizes the value of the individual. 
his right to life and property. And it's based on our theology that all people are created in God's image. And I think the non-aggression principle is very similar to Jesus' golden rule. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. And think about some examples from the history of the Christian church. The ancient church abolished infanticide and the blood sports that made murder a form of entertainment. And this was due to the Christian view of human dignity. In the fifth century, the great theologian St. Augustine pioneered just war theory. In the 13th century, English Christians stood up to King John and enforced the Magna Carta. Also in the 13th century, we find another great theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, arguing for the legalization of prostitution. In the 16th century, Jesuit scholars in Salamanca, Spain, pioneered free market economics. Also in the 16th century, the reformer Martin Luther wrote about what he called the two kingdoms, which is a teaching that James Madison credited with the Constitution's disestablishment of any church. One of the co-founders of the Libertarian Party, Dr. Murray Rothbard, argued that of all the early colonial American experiments in libertarianism, these were all started by Christians. And think about modern Christianity. It led the fight against slavery, against European communism, and even to this day continues to fight against human trafficking. All of this is because of Christianity's defense of human dignity. Now also demonstrating the compatibility of Christianity and libertarianism is the number of leaders of modern libertarianism who are Christians, including, but not limited to, I always wanted to say that, there are many, many leaders of libertarianism who are Christians, including Lou Rockwell, Jeff Deist, Thomas Woods, Andrew Napolitano, Lawrence Vance, Robert Murphy, Jacob Hornberger, Milo Yiannopoulos, Robert Higgs, Hans Hermann Hoppe, Jörg Guido Holzma, William Brigg, Gary North, Ryan McMakin, Chuck Baldwin, Stephen Yates, Norman Horn, Daniel McAdams, Randy England, and this other guy known as Jeffrey Tucker. I know that there are many, many others as well, of course. So in conclusion, I wanted to point out that a lot of things have changed in those last 20 years since my last visit to a, a libertarian convention. And most of it's been good. But we do have more to do as missionaries of liberty. I hope that maybe I'll crash the 2036 convention and find some things the same, especially our unequivocal commitment to proclaiming the good news of liberty and non-aggression. But I do hope to find some changes as well. I'd like to see a tiny or even a non-existent state and the people who cherish their liberties. Now to be sure, uh, uh, as we Christians know, there is no utopia in this life, and I think libertarians understand that as well. We are realists, we're not utopians. But having said that, just imagine how much more peace and prosperity we would see in a libertarian country and world. That is our good news to proclaim. That is our mission. And for the sake of outreach, I think we should also remember something that Murray Rothbard said. He said, whenever you say the word liberty, you should smile. So my friends, I wish you peace, prosperity, and blessings to each and every one of you. And I thank you so very much.